Green Seal City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome fans to some more bucko talk on the spread. I'm your host Jim Sella in studio with co-host Jay Dash. We're going to talk about Josh Harrison and Jordy Mercer. They're both about to begin their rehab assignments um, about a week or two from now, I think. Am I correct on that, Dash? Well, Harrison Somewhere could actually begin his rehab assignment as early as Tuesday and Mercer about a week later, actually. All right, so I was close. I still think, before we get into all this and you can yell at me, it's going to be a tough rehab for both these guys. Oh, we'll talk about that here. Harrison, he's been on the DL with a torn ligament in his thumb. He's been taking batting practice recently, and like I said, he could start as early as Tuesday. But Huntington came out and said he will start his rehab as a pinch hitter or a DH because they, they want to start things slow with him. But he's expected to get at least 30 at-bats in the minors to make sure he's fully healthy before returning uh, Huntington went on to say now this is like I was saying before man if if he shows that he can't hit because of this thumb well you're just not going to see him back it's not that he's going to come back and perform poorly I'm saying if if he can't come back he just won't come back at all because really I mean Aramis Ramirez he hasn't been working out quite the way the Pirates wanted recently. I mean, since they brought him over, he only has 38 at bats so far. So you got to give him a little bit more time. But if Harrison isn't able to come back, at least you got your third baseman. But like I was saying, he's they're going to start him slow and then they're going to make sure it isn't hurting him before returning because it's not necessary for him to come back. It's hard for a player to come back and squeeze a bat after that type of injury. Well, I mean, he's already been taking batting practice recently, like I said, and he hasn't showed any problems with it as of right now, but we'll have to see how it works in, during the games and whatnot. That's why, I mean, 30 at-bats, that's a long time to have a rehab assignment, so they want to make sure that he is going to be able to play without is it, his it glove hindering hand him. Or his throwing hand? Twas his glove hand. See, I don't know if I like that better or worse. I mean, I know the ball is going to be slamming into it to catch it, but if it's his throwing hand, then you got to try to grip that, and you have grip issues, and you could have a little bit of an errant throw maybe here or there. Yeah, if I had to choose a better hand to have it on, I would say the hand he does have it on, actually, uh, the glove hand, because, like you said, you're going to use it to throw. Now, to catch, most of the pressure goes on your index finger, actually, and I actually hurt my index finger the my senior year, and it was a pain in my ass, actually, every time I caught the ball. But really, there isn't as much pressure on the thumb when you're catching a ball. So that'll be his bottom hand on his bat, too. Am I correct there? Yes. Yeah, so I don't know. It's going to be weird. You got a lot of pressure on that thumb. It'll be tough to stay right away until you see him actually out there in game action. That's why they're going to give him some time here in the minors. And if it doesn't work out, man, he'll stay on a DL. But if he does come back healthy, I tell you what, I do want him to slot back in as our third baseman and keep going at shortstop like I was saying. Because Abraham, he's 6 for 38 with the Buckeyes so far with two doubles, three RBIs. He hasn't hit a jack, hasn't taken a walk, but he has only K'd three times. And you got to give him a little bit more time before you make a decision on him. But, I mean, hitting 158. That's rough. Easy says he's pissed because he's playing poorly and he's letting the Pirates down and it might be getting in his head a little bit. I mean, it's possible, I guess, but it's not like he was tearing the cover off the ball with the Brewers this year. So, I mean, of course he's upset. Trust me, if Abraham isn't hitting, anybody that doesn't hit like they think they can, they're going to be upset. But I don't know if it's really getting to his head. He's an older guy. Uh, he's been through slumps before. I think he's staying focused. But really, he's hitting in the fourth spot so far in every game. I'd like to see him move out of the fourth spot, actually. I really don't feel like he's bringing you the power that you need at, out of that number four Why spot. Why doesn't Gung play, bat fourth? I don't understand. I know he's not the prototypical four, but he's kind of the best we got unless you're going to put Alvarez there. I mean, well, like I said a couple times, I sort of like Pedro in the six spot or the five spot, really. And at number four, he's shown before that he struggles. But I agree. I think Gung is probably the best choice at number four. But you also got Marte, who hit well out of the four spot. Walker can hit okay out of the four spot as well. So, I mean, you have choices, even though they're not the prototypical number four type hitters for you in Aramis Ramirez. 
I guess you could say he is, but really he, he's yeah. been a number three hitter most of his uh, years with Milwaukee and Chicago and really the Pirates. I mean, he's really been a number three hitter more than anything, although he's not the Andrew McCutcheon type number three hitter. But I agree. I think you could move him out of the four spot, and the best number four hitter would be Jung Ho on this team right now. But let's look at Jordy Mercer, too. He's been on a deal with an MCO injury. Uh, he's expected to start a rehab assignment about a week after Harrison begins his, like I was saying. And with the emergence of Gung and the possibility of Harrison returning first, so you have two third basemen in A-Ram and Harrison and really Gung as well, I really don't see Mercer making it back in his lineup as a starter. I think he's going to remain the bench bat, and at least I hope he does. I, I want Gung at shortstop, and really I want... Harrison at third, and I want Aram and Mercer as bench bats for us. Now riddle me this. I talked to the Spreads resident athletic trainer, Brandon DeSantis. Brandon says that Mercer's injury will be most likely be easier to come back from and be 100% sooner than the Harrison injury. So if Mercer comes back 100% healthy before Harrison... Do you slot Mercer in at third base if, if Aramis is still struggling at the plate? No, I slot him in at shortstop, and I move Gung over to third base, and I still put Aram on the bench. And then if you want to play Aram a game, you just slot Gung over to shortstop and put Mercer on the bench for that game. But, I mean, that's a possibility, too. It looks like Harrison's going to be the first one back. But if Mercer's the first one back, yeah, I, I slot him in and put Aram on the bench because Aram would be a great bench bat as well. And, really, Mercer showed it before he got hurt that he was hitting very well for him, and he plays better defense at short than Gung and Gung plays better third base than Aramis Ramirez, in my opinion, so you're getting better defensively as well. Now, obviously, Brandon didn't get a chance to look at these guys, but just in his general area, uh, his biggest point was the, the hand is so intricate, you know what I mean? There's so many little bones and muscles in there. There's more room for setback with a, a ligament damage like that than the MCL is very cut and dry on how to treat it and everything nowadays. So that's why he thinks Mercer might have a little bit more potential to come back sooner. Well, listen, I could see Harrison coming back healthy, everything feeling okay, and then the injury reoccurring, something like that. I've seen that happen before. In fact, the Vaughn Travis this year, he had a shoulder injury for Toronto. He was playing very well before he got hurt. He came back, he felt healthy, he started playing very well again, and then the injury came back and he got sent back on a DL. But if Harrison is feeling it while he's playing, he's not going to have the same production. And the Pirates are going to notice this in the minors. And they're just going to leave him down there until he figures it out. Or if he doesn't get healthy, they'll never bring him back. And I mean, when Mercer comes back in, you still have options in the infield as well. But moving forward, with this lineup with Harrison and Mercer healthy, I want it to look something like Polanco, Marte, and Kutch at 1, 2, 3. Gung hitting 4th, Walker 5th, Pedro 6th, Harrison 7th at 3rd base, and then Cervelli 8th. And I mean, you got Mercer, Aram, Morse, Sean Rodriguez, and Chris Stewart on the bench. And let's not forget, they could call up Alan Hansen eventually, or at least when rosters expand too. And he could be, if nothing else, someone you can put in on the bases if you need a run late in the game and someone gets a single you put Alan Hansen off first maybe still second and then a base hit would tie the game or win the game for you something like that instead of having someone like Cervelli running the bases where you could put Hansen in and then Stewart to replace him after the inning's over. Poor Cervelli gets bumped all the way down to eighth at one point was the only catcher hitting 300. Well, he still is hitting 300, and I have no problem with him hitting 5th, 6th, or 7th, really. But you look at this. These are all good baseball players here in this lineup, man. And somebody got a bat 8th for you. The, my biggest problem, I want to say move Pedro to 8th just because it would be funny and just to spite him. But then you have him trying to run the bases in front of Polanco and Marte, and he'll slow them down, so... No go on that. Well, Pedro's actually a pretty good base runner, and usually if there's someone on in front of, let's say some anybody is on in front of Polanco, they're not going to be still in second and third anyway. So. Well, I'm not even talking about that. When Polanco hits one in the corner and he's running a third like a freaking bat out of hell, Alvarez is so fat he's not going to be able to keep up. It's going to be like in uh, yeah, Rookie know. of the Year where the Latin dude's like underlaying the little kid to the home plate. 
I I like Pedro at six, actually. I don't want to move him to eight. This guy has the most power on our team, really. and he's Move him to the bench. He's driving in runs unlike anyone on this team outside of Andrew McCutcheon. So I, I, I see no reason to bat him as four down as eighth. I just like to hate on Pedro. Yeah, I know you do. But, <laughs> but like I said, with that lineup and this bench, I mean, this de- team. Hey, last night when the game came on, I'm pretty sure, now I was drinking, so I'm not positive on this, but I'm pretty sure four of the starting players in the field for the Pirates were hitting 290 or better. Morte, Kutch, Cervelli, and Gung are all hitting up close to 290, 300. I mean, having four hitters that can do that in your lineup, you already have a good offense. And then there's Polanco and Walker as well. Of course, Pedro, I mean, he has his struggles here and there, but he's still an offensive threat much of the time. In fact, he drove in a big run the other day with the bases loaded. So Pedro still does good things. And getting Harrison back, putting Aram on the bench. I mean, with Morse and Aram on your bench, that is two power bats you can use at any time during the game if you need a run. Let's hope it all works out for you. I'd like to say, too, Michael Morse looks it's good so giant. far. He's driven the ball hard when he put put the bat on the ball. Now, he does have some strikeout problems sometimes and whatnot, but... When he puts the bat on the ball, man, the ball goes. He's like seven foot tall. That's all the bucko baseball we got for you today, folks. You can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread or follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win if you don't like what we had to say. You can go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Keep coming to the YouTube page. Keep clicking like. Keep subscribing. Throw us some comments, good or bad. We can take it, although Dash may cry.